Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and uh, click the like button and it does help my channel out quite a bit and I appreciate it so much. And I hope you are having a great, great day. And uh, we'll get started here. Uh, multiple malls in Ukraine. Shopping malls evacuated after bomb threats. And there were reports last weekend that shopping centers and markets in the western Ukrainian city of Lviv were evacuated after a series of bomb threats were called in to the police. Ukraine's ambassador to Estonia tweeted last Saturday that the bomb threats were made by either Russians or pro-Kremlin actors. The Kyiv, K-Y-I-V, the Kyiv, uh, Independent also claimed LVIV, Lviv, police had received anonymous phone calls about the explosive devices planted in shopping centers across the region and people had been evacuated while police conducted searches with bombing sniffing dogs. Bomb sniffing dogs. There are no reports that any bombs had been found. While the bomb threats may not have been authorized by the Kremlin, the threats do cause further disruption in a city that just two weeks earlier suffered another round of airstrikes. How sad. In mid-October, Lviv, L-V-I-V, was one of the Ukrainian cities targeted by airstrikes as part of Russia's retaliation for the October 8 truck explosion on the Kirsch Bridge that connects Russia to Crimea. In a video addressed the following day, Russian President Volodymyr Putin also described the bomb blast, bomb blast as an act of terrorism. That Monday, Russia began launching a series of missiles, missile strikes on several cities, including Lviv, in response to the truck explosion. At least 84 cruise miss missiles and 24 drones were used in Monday's attack, killing at least 11 and injuring over 60. In addition to Lviv, at least eight people were killed and another 24 injured. The strikes on Lviv hit critical infrastructure, causing the city to lose power. The following day, three additional explosions hit the city. Putin later boasted that the strikes were an act of revenge for the Kirsch Bridge explosion. My, oh my, it just keeps going on and on and on. Mm-mm-mm. I don't know. I always say that, don't I? Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, Republicans, red wave proves to be a mirage. The mid Now settle down. I was uh, listening to uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and a lot of his uh, music. And Fats Domino and um, oh uh, Jerry Lee Lewis's cousin uh, Mickey Gilly and I was up dancing and every time I get up and, and dance and I call it exercising because that's what I'm doing it to more or less is just kind of exercising they get all excited now I got Angel on the cam I picked her up but boy I had to hold her because she wiggles and she's heavy and for such a little little dog and she is uh uh, part Palpalian. Yeah, I adopted her from Paws Society uh, many years ago. I had her daddy also, not to get off the subject here, I'll get back to it in a minute, but um, she took on, oh, uh, what do you call the, the boss? She took on that, and she would not let her daddy bark. She would not let her her uh, her daddy go to the fence and look out the fence. She wouldn't let him do nothing. She'd attack him constantly. And finally, I found an older lady, and she was looking for a little dog because she had lost hers about a year earlier. And she was looking for a little lap dog. And uh, his name was Princey. I named him Princey. He was beautiful. Long-haired little thing. Oh, he was so pretty. And he went right to her. They were made for each other. That was just, you know, and I was happy. I was sad, but I was happy because he would be happy. He'd be the only one there and would never be attacked again, you know. So, but anyway, let's get back to the article. 
Yeah, I drift, uh, do I sound like somebody else, you know, in and out? No. <laughs> I just get carried away, that's all. Oh, whatever. Okay, the midterms delivered a seismic shock for the Democrats in Florida, but otherwise a mixed bag of both parties. Control of Congress remained undecided early Wednesday. Loretta Mile Myers fills out her ballot at her polling place, the New Life Worship Center Church of God at Fayetteville, Pennsylvania. Republicans dream of a red wave that would wash Democrats in Congress and state capitals out to sea proved to be overly optimistic as Democrats held on to key gubernatorial uh, and Senate seats enough so that control of Congress remained up in the air Wednesday morning. Now, I've not heard anything else today. Uh, I have been so busy, I've not been on. Uh, I was on earlier this morning, but uh, then I had to get busy. Democrats held on to a crucial Senate seat in New Hampshire, uh, where incumbent Maggie Hassan, H-A-S-S-A-N, Hansen, Hassan, Hassan maybe, defeated public Don Bogiuk, a retired Army general, and managed to flip Pennsylvania's seat, sit, uh, Senate seat with a victory by John Fetterman. Republicans held Senate seats in Ohio and North Carolina, but it was still too early to call Senate seats in Wisconsin, Nevada, Georgia, Arizona that could determine the majority. Democrats also were successful in gover governor's races winning in Wisconsin, Mrs. Michigan, and Pennsylvania. But Republicans held on to governor's mansions in Florida, Texas, and Georgia. In the House, meanwhile, Democrats kept seats in districts from Virginia to Kansas to Rhode Island, which many districts in states like New York and California have not been called. A shock described as nothing less than seismic followed from the state of Florida. Governor DeSantis and Senator Rubio ha uh, handedly won Miami D.A.D.E. County which just six years ago, Hillary Clinton won by 30 points. Mr. DeSantis himself lost the county by 20 points when he first ran for governor in 2018. A similar pattern followed in Puerto Rico, or Puerto Rican, heavy Osceola County in central Florida. Florida's 29 electoral votes, the pundits proclaimed after the night's result, will be out of reach for the Democrats for the foreseeable future if the GOP capture holds. Florida is no longer a swing state. They said, it's a red state if the Democrats can't win Miami Daddy, D-A-D-E, I don't know how to pronounce that one, Daddy, Daddy, whatever, to offset GOP strength elsewhere in Florida. In celebrating his victory, the Florida governor leaned into the culture wars that have served him so well so far. We have embraced freedom. We have maintained law and order. We have protected the rights of parents. We have respected our taxpayers. And we reject woke ideology, Mr. DeSantis said at a rally in Tampa. We will never ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. The Democrats fared better in other races being eyed as potential bellwethers for the night. Republicans came close to unseating two incumbents, Democrats in deep blue Northern Virginia, Abigail Spanberger and Jennifer Waxton, but ultimately failed and incumbent Senator Benet, Bennett, it would be Bennett, not Benet, Bennett, in Colorado managed to fend off a challenge from one of the GOP's least Trump allied candidates Joe Odia. Democrats also uh, prevailed in New York's hard-fought race for governor. The incumbent, uh, Kathy Hochul, declared victory over her Republican opponent, Cong Congressman Lee Zeldin, shortly before midnight. Uh, Tonight you made your voices heard loud and clear, and you made me the first woman ever elected to be the governor of the state of New York, but I am not here to make history. I'm here to make a difference. 
Foschel told supporters late Tuesday night. Candidates backed by President Trump did not perform as well as the GOP might have hoped. Along with the three key battleground states, gu gubernatorial uh, national -torial elections in Maryland, Massachusetts, Illinois, and Colorado all went to the Democrats. Though voters in Arkansas did not opt for Trump, alumna Sarah Huckabee Sanders and Govern Georgia's governor, Brian Kemp, easily beasted Stacey Abram Abrams to keep his seat. Bested Stacey Abrams. B-E-S-T-E-D, bested. Exit polls suggest that the electorate is not in a good state. Electorate is not in a good state, but n neither party seemed to be capitalizing on it to the extent they hoped. Early exit polls released by CNN illustrated the depth of anger. One brutal question asked about the way things are going in the country. Nearly three-fourths of the respondents said they were either dissatisfied or angry about the state of the nation. Well, so be it. Look what we've been through. Only 25% said they were either enthusiastic or satisfied. Turnout hit record levels in several states, but reports of irregularities or other problems were relatively few. Mr. Trump, always eager to return to his favorite grievances, wasted no time before complaining after some hiccups involving printer settings stirred up his base at Maricopa County, Arizona. In a social media post, he called on Americans to protest, 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 what he described as a voter integrity disaster in Arizona. In an interview that aired on News Nation Tuesday, the former president and 2024 frontrunner for the GOP sought to make sure that the outcome of the day's voting is a win-win for him regardless of which party, if any, can boast of a decisive victory. I think if they win, I should get all the credit. And if they lose, I should not be blamed at all, Mr. Trump said to his fellow Republicans. Well, he's got blame for everything. <laughs> Why is he backing out now? <laughs> you know? Bless his heart, in a way, you know, it's just, if he's done wrong, like I've always said, he will make it right. But uh, there has been so many lies on him, you don't know what to believe about him, um, him anymore. It's a mess. Mr. Trump was not alone in his suspicion about the integrity of the vote. Before the polls had even closed in Georgia, Democratic activists were taken to the airwaves to denounce the night's results. In a mid-afternoon appearance on MSNBC, contributor Jason Johnson was already calling into question the legitimacy of the vote. <clears throat> Jumping the gun. The level of voter expression is beyond anything that we saw in 2018, Mr. Johnson said. We can't say that whatever happens tonight is a fair and equ equitable election because there have been so many laws passed by election deniers to keep people from being able to express themselves. <clears throat> well, I have to agree. Some, you know. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, get off of here for now, and uh, I'll be back in probably just a little bit later. Uh, the puppies have ate early, so I won't have to feed them early tonight. Um, they were hungry, so I go ahead and feed them. And then I wait, and then uh, until about bedtime before I feed them again. Because they ate at 12, so when it gets around 10, 10, 30, their little tummies will be getting hungry. So then I will feed them then. But the kitties get fed at 6, no matter what. They get fed at 6. And they just get a little bit of... Um, chicken and uh, salmon, little tablespoons full of food, because they have plenty of dry food and treats. Oh, yes. <laughs> I go broke every month, almost. <laughs> okay, I'll be back.
you're a blessing. Give someone else a blessing. Bye. Find my button here. Okay. So long. Till laters.